What if I told you that you could overcome anything? That there isn't a circumstance in the world that can keep you down? That what you go through doesn't define who you are? Would you believe me? Myself, from a couple years ago, absolutely not. But as I've come to realize, life has a funny way of proving you wrong. Today, I want to talk to you about the critical elements of happiness, confidence, and overcoming obstacles. Resilience, and how it's built in some of those toughest moments. In order to do that, I want to tell you about the lowest moment in my life, but also one of my happiest memories. On June 13th, 2020, my house was struck by lightning and burned down. I remember it all very vividly. Lightning had hit the roof right above my parents' room. And from there, the roof caught fire, spreading to the attic, and from there, the entire house. Luckily, there was a loud crash when the lightning hit, so me and my family escaped unharmed, but the damage had already been done. I remember standing outside in the rain for hours, helplessly watching as my house went up ablaze. I had never felt more powerless than in that moment. I remember after the dark rain that seemed endless, going back inside my house and seeing what was left of my house or what wasn't left of my house, I guess I should say. And that experience was just heartbreaking. I remember waiting for two years for my house to undergo reconstruction COVID delay after COVID delay after COVID delay prolonged the process, and we would visit every so often. Every couple days turned into every couple weeks, and every couple weeks turned into every couple months, and the more and more that I visited, the faster and faster I realized that no matter how long I waited or how much I wanted it, that my childhood home would never be the same again. But honestly, none of that was the worst part. The worst part was that when I was standing outside in the rain, I was standing next to my mom, and she was crying and crying and crying, and I did nothing. I can vividly remember the look in her eyes of panic and despair, and I remember the trembling in her cheeks, and I, I wanted to help her with everything in me. I wanted to be there for her. I wanted to comfort her, but there was something inside me that just stopped me dead in my tracks, and what happened was while my mom was suffering and in pain, I did nothing. I just stood there awkwardly like a statue, not knowing what to do. And for a while, I would lie to myself and say that I was in shock or something like that, but deep down, I knew that's not really what happened. What really happened was that I was scared, scared of vulnerability, scared to the point that when the person that I loved the most was hurting the most, I did nothing. And to be honest, I've never really forgiven myself for that, and I don't know if I ever will. Now, at the beginning of the story, I don't know if you remember, but I said that it was one of my happiest memories. And you may be thinking to yourself, what about that story could possibly be happy? Well, as easy as it would be for me to say that that experience only took and took and took things away from me, it's simply untrue. I realized that whenever you hit your lowest point is when you're open to the greatest amount of change. And in an odd way, that experience opened my eyes to all the problems I had in my life, specifically all the problems that my fear of vulnerability has caused in my life that I choose to ignore or had chosen to ignore. And I realized that 
Life happens. There are going to be times that whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And those experiences, they can break you. They can break you physically. They can break you mentally. It can break your heart and it can break your spirit. And all of those things are going to leave a mark. But the mark that they leave can either be the mark of victory or it can be the mark of defeat. Because in every way that you break, in every time that you break, while it's an opportunity for you to fall apart and give up, it's also an opportunity for you to come back stronger. Now, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what you're going through or what you've been through or what's going to happen to you. But, and I'm not going to pretend like I would understand it at all, but what I can tell you is that it's not what you go through that determines what you, where you end up. What determines where you end up is how you come back from adversity. Now, the first thing that that experience pointed out to me was that I cannot accomplish my transformation of becoming happy, truly happy, alone. I need people there for me. You need people that you trust. And I don't know what your impression of me is, but I am one of the most introverted people that you will ever meet. So as much as I would love to be happy and by myself and successful all the time, it's simply not a reality. You need people who will support you and be there for you when you need them. Someone who would have helped my mom when she needed me. Specifically, you need real ones. Now, real ones is just a silly term I like to use with my friends, but what it means, I think, is important. It means that you trust and you rely on these people. These people aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they always have your best interest at heart. These people aren't necessarily positive and happy all the time, but they're always trying to have a positive influence on your life. And I can tell you today that I absolutely would not be up here if it wasn't for the people you see in these pictures. These are the people that motivate me to become a better man, a better friend, so that hopefully in the future, if something like that ever happens again, I can be there for my mom. My second point, fairly similar, is that I've come to realize that helping people gives joy like nothing else. One of my favorite quotes is from Jackie Robinson, and I'll paraphrase it for you, but it goes something like this. A life is not important except for the impact that it has on other lives. And I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. And I don't know if it's because of my faith, but I think that just in general principle it's applicable to everyone that if you go out of your way and actively try and help people, that your life will be blessed in turn. I believe that if we were to live in a world where other people would go out of their way and try to help people when they were down, that our world would be so much of a better place. That's why I'm up here today. I don't gain anything out of this speech. I'm here because I want to inspire people to be the good in someone's life, to be the good for the world that we desperately need, to be the good that you have the potential to be. Now, before I get to my final point, I want to reflect back on how I went from a failure who couldn't even support their own mother when she needed me the most to someone who's confident enough and strong enough to talk about their own personal insecurities and personal traumas. I realize that I am no different than you. I'm not unique in any way. I have my fears, but what makes me different than who I was a couple of years ago, what makes me a better person, is that I don't let my fear control me. And that's the final step. Once you let go of fear, that's the final step to reaching true happiness. Because fear is the only thing that can stop you from becoming who you want to be. For so long, 
My fear of vulnerability stopped me from being there for my parents, my friends, you name it. For so long, it plagued me, and this is applicable to everyone. It can be fear of abandonment, fear of judgment, you name it. This fear will stop you if you let it consume you, but if you let go, your life is gonna be so much happier. I wanna conclude and say that I wanna thank my parents for being here and my friends for supporting me along the way. Thank you, you all have a good rest of your night.